In this video, we are going to do some word problems. We are going to solve some applications involving tangent, sine, and cosine. All right, forgive my bad drawing, but angle of elevation from the side of the pool to the top of a waterfall. <laughs> pool? Waterfall? OK, so I'm supposed to picture there's a water. Who's got a waterfall in their pool? What's I do. <laughs> waterfall, waterfall. <laughs> this is like that foam at the bottom. All right, anyway, let's not judge the picture. Let's do some math. Um, all right, see, this video is going to suddenly get quiet because it'll be like suddenly like, and then you guys weren't here anymore, and it'll be dead silent. Um, 54 degrees, angle of elevation. That's going to be right here in the picture. Um, the distance is 230 feet. Okay, the angle of elevation from the far side of the pool to the top of the waterfall. Okay, so I think this distance needs to be on the hypotenuse because it's like far side of the pool to the top of the waterfall, like just straight out. So 230 feet on the hypotenuse. Okay, and then we're supposed to find the height of the waterfall, for example. So that would be right here. So from the 54, x is opposite, and uh, 230 is the hypotenuse. So I've got opposite and hypotenuse. So that is the sine function. Okay, so sine of 54 degrees is equal to x over 230. All right, opposite over hypotenuse. So if I want to solve this, I need to multiply both sides by 230. So these are going to cancel each other out. So that is going to give me, so 230 times sine 54. So this is a calculator situation. All right, so we are allowed to use our TI-30. Now it says, uh, I think it's a nearest hundredth of a foot. So that's two decimal places. <clears throat> so 186.07. Whoops. Feet. All right, next we're supposed to find the width across the pool. All right, so the width across the pool that's going to be this distance right here. I'm going to call it y. Okay, so this is the width across the pool. Um, so, looking at that instead of the height of the waterfall, I've got adjacent and hypotenuse. So this is going to be pretty much the same thing, but it's going to be the cosine function. So I'm thinking cosine of 54 is equal to y over 230. So same deal. Got to multiply by 230 on both sides. So that's going to give me y equals. So it's 230 cosine 54. So that's 135.19. All right, so that was it for number eight. Number nine. An observer in a lighthouse 350 feet above sea level observes two ships directly offshore. The angles of depression are 4 degrees and 6.5 degrees. How far apart are the ships? 
All right, show all work and round your answer to the nearest hundredth of a foot. All right, so here's a picture of what they're talking about. So you got a lighthouse and you have two ships um, directly offshore. And um, so the lighthouse is 350 feet tall. So this is going to be 350. All right, I'll make that more clear in a minute. Um, but we have these angles of depression. So this one, let me zoom in. All right, so this, this first one has the angle of depression of 6.5 degrees. All right, so I could draw my triangle like this, and uh, I could figure out the horizontal distance, okay, how far the boat is from the lighthouse along the ground. Um, so technically, this is where the angle of depression is. Now understand, I could draw the triangle a different way. If I draw my triangle this way, um, then my angle of depression uh, was up here, right? 6.5 degrees. But from the perspective of the boat, that means the angle of elevation is 6.5 degrees. All right, the angle of depression and the angle of elevation are the same thing. So um, I could put it like this. And so many students are more comfortable writing the triangle this way, sort of along the ground. Anyway, um, so let's figure out, uh, I'll call this x1, all right, it's the distance to the first boat. So we could figure this out, um, let's see, which trig function are we going to use? Well, this is um, opposite and adjacent, so that's going to be the tangent function. So I'm just going to do this off to the side. So the tangent of 6.5 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's 350 over x1. All right, opposite over adjacent. So I can use the shortcut on this and uh, swap these two. So that's going to give me that x1 is equal to 350 over the tangent of 6.5. So I can just put that in my calculator. So 350 over the tangent of 6.5. All right, so whoops, that first distance is going to be um, 3,072. Uh, well, 3,071.91. All right, now I need to do the same thing again for the other boat. All right, I wonder can I just take this and move it? Okay, so I'm just gonna, because I don't want the triangles to overlap each other, so I'm just gonna change this one. So now, out to the other boat, you see how the angle gets smaller as I stretch it? So that's how I know to make sure that this one is the smaller one. So this one will now be four degrees. Okay, and so now this new longer distance, this one should be longer, this will be my x2. But it's the same um, setup, right? It's still opposite over adjacent. So, um, so let's just go again. So tangent of four degrees is gonna equal 350 over x2. And so by doing the little swap trick, that means that x2 is going to equal 350 over tangent 
four degrees, which means that x2 will equal Five thousand five point two three. Okay, now neither one of these is the final answer. We're supposed to find how far apart the ships are. So the distance between the two ships will be x two minus x1. All right, we're just going to subtract these two positions. Well, wow, that is horrible writing. Let me try that one more time. The distance is going to be uh, I'm doing x2 minus x1. So it's going to be 5,005.23 minus 3,071.91. And that should be the answer. So look, I've already got this one in my calculator. Three thousand seventy one point nine one. All right, that's one thousand nine hundred thirty three point three two. All right, so this is the distance between the ships. All right, I feel like I probably should not put a box around x1 and x2 because they are not the final answer. Okay, so that's how you would do number nine. All right, one more word problem. A passenger in an airplane at an altitude of 10 kilometers sees two towns directly to the east of the plane. The angles of depression of the two towns are 28 degrees and 55 degrees. How far apart are the two towns? All right, round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, so this is almost the same thing as problem number nine. Okay, except instead of a lighthouse and two ships, it's a plane and two towns but the problem number nine and problem number ten are virtually identical. Alright, so here's my plane and here are my two towns. So, the plane has an altitude of ten kilometers. Alright, ten kilometer altitude. Okay, let's see. The angles of depression are 28 degrees and 55 degrees. All right, so this one will be my 55 degrees. All right, now remember the angle of depression is really out here. This is the 55 degrees. Okay, but that angle will be the same as this angle because they are alternate interior angles of parallel lines. So I'll just go ahead and draw it right here. Um, so, I could use this to calculate the um, distance along the ground from the, the point directly underneath the plane to the town. All right, and I'm going to call that distance x1. So, I could calculate um, this distance along the ground right now. Opposite over adjacent, this is the tangent function once again. So I will do the tangent of 55 is equal to 10 over x, uh, 10 over x1. If I uh, use the shortcut, I can reverse these two. So that's going to tell me that x1 
is equal to 10 over the tangent of 55. So that's going to tell me that x1 10 over tangent 55. That is 7.0. OK, so that's x1. Not the final answer, but something that we're going to need. Now let's find the distance to the other town. All right, so this pink triangle is showing the distance to the other town. Now the, um, the angle of elevation or the angle of depression for this one is going to be 28 degrees. All right, so again, truly the angle of depression is right here. This is the 28 degrees. But that should be the same as this angle right here. So I'm going to go ahead and write it right here. Now, um, I can find the distance, again, from the point underneath the plane to the second town. I will call that distance x2. And understand that that distance is all the way from here to here. OK? And I'm going to do it the same way I did for the other uh, town. So I'm going to say that the tangent of 28 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that would be 10 over x2. Using the shortcut, I can swap these. So that means x2 should equal 10 over the tangent of 28. So let's see what we get. Ten over the tangent of twenty-eight. So that's going to be eighteen point eight. Now we are supposed to find the, the distance between the two towns. Right now we have the um, this distance, all right, from this point right here to the first town, and then we have the distance from the same point to the second town. Uh, but we're looking for this distance I just highlighted in yellow. How can I get the yellow distance? Well, of course, the yellow distance is the difference between x2 and x1. So I just need to subtract x2 minus x1. All right? So the distance between the two towns, I'm going to call that d for distance. And um, d. The distance between the towns should equal x2 minus x1. So it should equal 18.8 .8 minus 7.0. So therefore, the distance should be 11.8 um, kilometers. And that is the final answer for number 10. And I think that is going to be the last word problem. So um, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I will see you on the next video.